Hi, I'm Reg Cottrell with LS2 Helmets. Now, it's not going to come as much of a surprise to you if I tell you that we would like to be your helmet company of choice. We offer a full range of helmets from half to three quarter to full motocross, adventure, and modular. And all of our helmets, every single one of them, meet very stringent safety standards from DOT up to and including ECE. Now, if you're not familiar with ECE, this is the standard that is accepted by MotoGP, the premier racing, motorcycle racing series in the world. Also, we manufacture our helmets according to credible science, precise engineering, and manufacturing, which is tightly controlled and very efficient. Now, what does this mean to you? It means that you get a high quality and excellent helmet at a very reasonable price. So why am I telling you these things? I'm telling you them because we believe that the more you know about helmets, the more you know about a helmet company, the more intelligent your choice will be when it comes to purchasing one. Let me give you a little bit more information to make that helmet purchase an even smarter one. In 1981, a professor by the name of Dietmar Ota of the Hanover Medical School issued a study on motorcycle helmets. More specifically, this study addressed the frequency and distribution of impact on a helmet in the event of a motorcycle accident. Now, before we go any further with this, let me uh, bring up something that you probably thought of, and that is just how relevant is a study that's 30 plus years old? It's very relevant, and it's very relevant for two reasons. First off, the human body hasn't changed in 30 years. Okay. We've gained a few pounds, got a little gray, but in general, we are still building bodies today the way we were 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 1,000 years ago. So nothing's changed there, folks. And secondly, and this is a bit distressing, we as writers are continuing to throw ourselves on the ground with distressing regularity. So these two factors, the human body hasn't changed and we are still crashing, makes this 30 plus year old study as relevant today as the day it was issued. All right, let's get into a bit of detail of the good professor's study. What we have done is taken an LS2 helmet and plotted his findings and color coded them. Now, let's talk about what these mean and you can infer what it might mean to you when it comes to purchasing a helmet. Let's first take a look at the sides and the rear of the helmet as it related to this study. A couple of things that might need explanation. First, the numbers are percentages. That is, they re represent the percentage of impacts measured in a given area in this study. Secondly, the color coding. The white areas experienced the lowest percentage of impact at the other end of the scale, the red areas experience the highest percentage of impact, with yellow being second and green being third. So as you can see here, for example, the right side and rear experienced a total of 16.5% of the impacts measured in this study. The left side, 16.8%. For a total left side right side and rear for a total of 33.3% of all the impacts in this study took place in those areas. Now let's take a look at the front of the helmet. The thing that pops out here, of course, is the red area. Now recall that I said that the red areas indicate the highest percentages of impact measured in this study. The chin bar, 19.4% of the impacts were measured on the right side, 15.2% on the left. The second highest areas were the low forehead area, 8.2, 10.1. I think it's kind of interesting that the actual eye port area is relatively minor. But what this slide does point up very, very vividly is that old saying about taking it on the chin. In this study of accidents, the definitely took it on the chin here. All right, let's summarize the numbers. The front of the helmet took two-thirds 
of all the impact measured in this study. In other words, two out of three riders who went down did a face plant. The sides and the rear accounted for the other third. Now those math whizzes uh, out there will note that this number does not exactly add up to 100%. And the reason for that is because the numbers have been rounded. All right, what does all this mean? That's for you to decide. First off, this is a credible study. It has been cited many times uh, over the past 30 years in various studies, including the Hertz study. It has been quoted often. It has been vetted by experts. Uh, can it be argued? Certainly, any study can be argued. Is it the definitive study? Probably not. But it does give you a bit more information that you can use when it comes to making that smart decision on buying a helmet. And of course, we hope the helmet that you do buy is an LS2. But we're not going to sell you one painted like this.